there are rumors circulating that Rolex is going to be putting microchips in their watches in order to read your data about who the owner is, service records, and et cetera. In this video, we're gonna be covering this, whether or not it's true and what this means for watch collectors, watch buyers, and specifically Rolex collectors and Rolex buyers. But guys, before you do that, I do wanna mention that if you're a watch trader, dealer, or flipper, I have a new platform that I just launched two weeks ago called Chronograbs, chronograbs.com, which is an online wholesale watch club or marketplace where you can trade your watches wholesale, get the best price on both ends of the deal, and rest assured because we do go through a vetting process. So if this is you, make sure to check out chronograbs.com now where you can apply to be one of the first to be part of this new and exciting watch club, chronograbs.com. So microchips in Rolex watches, what is going on? If you're part of any of the, the watch communities online, Facebook, Instagram, the different chat groups, maybe if you're in Watch You Seek, the Rolex forums, you may have seen that people are jumping to these conclusions and they're referencing a patent that Rolex had applied for somewhat recently uh, through WIPO, the World International Patent Organization. And they have a new technology or supposedly a new technology where they can track your service records among other things. And there are also some photos circulating around of what appears to be a Rolex movement with a chip that's actually embedded in the movement. Now, I had a hard time believing this because I have dealt with NFC and RFID and chips quite a lot. I did go through a graduate program in the engineering department and I did have to study patents as well as these types of technologies. Additionally, I developed and built an inventory tracking system at Delray Watch where we use some of these technologies the readers, I have spent hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of hours at this point, figuring out what works, what doesn't, and how the metal affects the signal. And the thing is, when you have metal of the watches, it detracts from the readability of these types of technologies. It can throw it off a whole lot. And that's why you see certain technologies out there in the real world not work as though they should, right? Maybe you live in a gated community or an apartment building or something like that where you have a little chip in your car and that's gonna be an RFID reader for the most part and the readers don't always pick it up and that's because there's interference. So my gut reaction here is that this just can't be unless they have something truly novel and new and exciting that no one else has come up with. This is going to be an issue with reading the chips through the metal, thick metal cases of the watches which are supposed to be some of the most rugged, durable and hard hitting water depth rated cases and all of watchmaking, right? The Oyster case is what Rolex is known for. So my gut reaction is this just can't be true. So I went to the patent. There'll be a link in the description below to where you can see and read it yourself. Now it is in another language. You can use their, their uh, translation tool. So I didn't translate it to English. And going through this patent, it looks to me like Rolex is not putting a microchip inside their watches. Instead, it looks like they just have a simple technology where their warranty cards, which are already tied to the watches based on serial numbers, are just going to have likely an NFC, an NFC chip inside of them, which most phones today can read. They have specific readers. And of course, the Rolex service centers and probably the authorized dealers, the boutiques, they'll be able to read them as well. But nowhere in the patent do I see anything about actually installing some type of chip in the movement of the watch. Now, this is not a new technology by any stretch of the imagination. It's also not that new in watches either. Hublot has tried doing this for so many years. They've used the Wise Key. Uh, LVMH has tried doing various different things. People have tried to bake in um, blockchain technologies so that they can verify that it's true. And kind of, this has been an area that's been developed over the years. And Breitling has done this with their digital warranty cards and brands have kind of gone back and forth and in my opinion, it's just because of the reliability. It's difficult. Sometimes the chips go bad. Sometimes, you know, if, if they start using RFID, certain types of electromagnetic forces can mess with those chips and it requires pulling power from the reader. And so these things become very difficult. And so Rolex is generally lost to the game with technologies and kind of giving people what they want. Now, I'm not saying that people want this, but I think it, kind of leads us into an interesting thought 
train here of, well, what does this actually mean for Rolex watch buyers, sellers, collectors, those that have some skin in the game, regardless of you know the degree of skin in the game that you have? And I think this could lead to a place where, and we were, I was just having a conversation about this in one of the, the dealer groups that I'm in. We were just talking about how this could lead to two pools of watches where here's the certified Rolex pre-owned. As we know, Rolex has their certified pre-owned program where the, the boutique or the authorized dealer pays Rolex to certify it so they could ideally sell it for more with sometimes prices given, this is debatable, but prices or suggested prices given on the pre-owned pieces from Rolex. And then you have these, essentially these watches that are good out there in the market. And then you have the ones that haven't gone through the readability. Maybe they haven't gone through the Rolex service center. And it's more verifiable if Rolex can just read it on a card instead of go through the records. Hey, where did this watch actually get serviced? And let's say one day that Rolex does decide to put something in the watch. They do come up with something. Perhaps, you know, there's some type of antenna that is able to be connected to the dial so that through the dial they could read these types of chips instead of having to do it you know through the metal case which is you know super difficult that would lead us to two pools of rolex watches now i think that for people that always want to play it safe they're probably the people that would only buy it brand new from a boutique or an authorized dealer or any kind of watch they would probably want to buy the certified the chip readed type of watch, whereas everyone else that wants a better deal and kind of trusts in the other people out there on the internet, like myself, like Delray Watch and so many other countless dealers, they're okay getting a much steeper discount because they trust that, hey, they've gone through it, they have the watchmakers, and sure, it's not readable in this type of way, but they don't care because they're not looking to collect the watch, they're looking to wear the watch like I do myself and so many of you out there as well. You know, these watches are meant to be worn. Rolex is making watches meant to be worn. Their advertisements don't show the watch in the back of a sock drawer hidden from any kind of burglaries because someone's speculating on the price of it five years from now. No, Rolex watches are pictured on athletes and people climbing mountains. If we want to talk all the way in the earliest days of Rolex advertise, advertising with Sir Edmund Hillary and Mount Everest and all of these things, Rolex watches are meant to be worn, even coming from the manufacturer themselves. And so... I think this takes us back to the discussion that we always go through is our watches meant to be speculated on and flipped and, and really just held as assets or stores of a little bit of cash, or are they meant to be worn? And you know my opinion, especially if you follow this channel, and it seems to be increasingly the opinion of most dealers out there now that watch prices have pulled back, including and mainly blue chip brands like Rolex, watches are meant to be worn so let's say that this does happen first of all the chip thing doesn't appear to be happening right now based on this patent but let's say that it does i think it just creates better buying opportunities for us as collectors and enthusiasts that don't need like a silly little chip to scan on their iphone 21 in the future so that they can say yeah it's authentic and geek out over it at a red bar meeting and show everybody look my watch scans like who cares about that do you like the watch did you have fun with it did it you know, commemorate a special occasion. That's what these things are for. And so I just wanted to make this video here to share with these thoughts because I know there's some privacy concerns I myself with some of these tech solutions out there. You get some privacy concerns, right? It's always kind of, you know, begs you to look a little deeper. Hey, what's going on here? And I think what's going on here is Rolex is just trying to track a little bit better their watches, the service, where they go, cut down on frauds, cut down on fakes, and probably provide a better service at the end of the day. And in the end, we may get better watch deals because of it. But what do you guys think? I would love to see it and hear it in the comments below. And once again, do not forget to check out chronograbs.com. If you're a buyer, seller, or trader, wholesale in this type of manner, we'd love to have you if you fit the bill. And also do not forget to sign up for my newsletter, link in the description below, where you can find out more about things that I'm working on in the future. And I promise that I won't spam you. In fact, I don't think I've sent out an email at all yet. But when I do have something that I truly think you need to know, that would be the place to see it. We'll see you next time, guys. You've been chatting with John P.